was very awkward in the court case of Ajamir because Yamadudas were right in attempting to arrest Ajamir. But the Vishnu Duda said back to them, Although Yamaraj under these circumstances was accused by both the Vishnu Dudas and the Yamadudas, he is perfect in administering justice because he is empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore he will explain what his real position is and how everyone is controlled by the Supreme Controller of the Personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada Ki. So here we see the, <coughs> the Yamaraj, one of the uh, Mahachans, is not always in a very <coughs> easy condition because he has to uh, very carefully judge the activities of people. That's not always so easy. And then at the same time, there are also sometimes, although he knows a lot of stuff, Karma and Dharma has explained them to his followers. Sometimes there may be exceptional cases also, which go beyond ordinary understanding. Like in this case, Ajahnil, although he was so sinful, at the time of his death, by good fortune, he chanted the holy name of Krishna. And therefore, uh, the Vishnu Dudas were right in protecting him. But at the same time, the Vishnu Dudas accused uh, the Yama Dudas. Uh, by this indirect Yamaraj, why they are trying to punish this person. So in the ordinary course of our activities, there is always a chance that we may commit some mistake. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, every action in this world is overshadowed by some defect. <coughs> So therefore we have to somehow apply this understanding that ultimately we have to take shelter of Krishna. And Krishna is situated in everyone's heart and he's guiding the ways of all living entities perfectly. Otherwise, except for Krishna, for everyone else it's not so easy. Uh, unless we take shelter of Krishna, there will always be some mistakes. That is the fact. <laughs> so therefore we should take full shelter of Krishna and uh, try our best to always uh, take his help us. Uh, before we judge something, before we come to a conclusion, we should try to think twice and pray to Krishna also. Because one thing may look like that in this world, and then again it may be different. We don't have perfect knowledge, and, and Krishna is perfect. It's like we see many people make plans, but then it comes out a different way, although everything seems to look just right. Um, so man proposes God, he supposes things. And um, Krishna is also not in such an easy position. He's in everyone's heart, he's perfect. But he's like Nitya Nitya Nam Chaitanya Chaitanya Nam Eko Yoga He's trying to, not trying, but he's actually fulfilling the desires of everyone. As among so many eternal living beings, there's one eternal living being that is different because he's fulfilling the desires of everyone else. We can just desire Krishna is making his desires possible. And people may ask, how is it possible? Krishna is fulfilling all desires. I have the desire now for a million euros, but it's not being fulfilled right now. But Srila Prabhupada says that all our desires will be fulfilled, but may not be immediate at some point. <laughs> it depends also on the intensity of our desires. And there's a whole queue of desires from previous lifetimes that are also have to be fulfilled, so it takes some time. <laughs> and some of our desires are very contradictory also, so we should be very careful in what we desire. But Krishna's position and that from our point of view is not an easy. We could not do his duty. Now are we almighty. <laughs> but even theoretically it would be very difficult. Like Srila Prabhupada explains that on one hand the thief may break into a house 
And the chief is praying, please let me not be caught. Let me get out of this. Yeah. Somehow I've come into this situation now. I make my life a little like this. Not very pleasant, but somehow I have to steal. Please don't let me get caught. And the owner of the house, he's praying at night. Please don't let any thief steal anything from me. So probably explains Krishna's situation not so easy. <laughs> Uh, he will satisfy everyone, not so easy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we should, in all activities, uh, pray to Krishna and take his help and understand that our own plan making is always limited. So, every day we should pray to Krishna and give us some insight of what his plans are. Uh, just like we have to be also very careful if we desire. The best thing is to desire what Krishna wants. That's the best to try to find that. Otherwise, we always baffled, frustrated, and But if we tune our desire with Krishna's desire, then there's harmony. Because Krishna has a big plan. We see everything comes at the right time in the season: the flowers, the springtime, the fruit start growing, and then. At the right time when they arrive, they fall on the tree, not before, not after, it's just when it's fit to be eaten by people. The milk comes in the breast of the mother, just at the time of birth, so it's just, everything has its uh, rhythm, and nature we see, so wonderful. Krishna's rhythm and Krishna's plan are so perfect, but we may not always understand because he has an overall picture. We only see one little angle. 10% of the whole picture, 5%. And somebody else may see from a different angle, 5%, 10%. And from his angle, point of view, it may look right, and from his also right. But the 360 degree picture that is only seen by Krishna because he's present everywhere. That is the meaning of Krishna that he's present everywhere. So he sees the whole picture. So when we tune in with Krishna's plan and Krishna's uh, will, and we're living in harmony, and which, so to speak, tuning in with Krishna's will <laughs> and uh, Krishna's wider plan, then it's the best thing. For this we study by word, huh? for this we are uh, hearing spiritual master, and uh, we are consulting with the devotees. And we try to purify our mind by chanting and performance of service so that we can tune in with Krishna's desire. There was also a little uh, story in Germany, but it's more like a fun story, traditional story, that one man who was living in the forest with his wife, they were both very pure, uh, poor, not pure, but poor, <laughs> as normal as Germans. And he was living from going into the forest, sometimes cutting a tree. And uh, one day a uh, fairy appeared, a little fairy, with a magic stick. And she said, I'm a fairy, I'm living in this tree. If you don't cut it, you can have three desires fulfilled, uh, any desire. You just think of me and say that desire as soon as you speak the desire is fulfilled. Or even if you don't think of me. He said, okay, I need some time and, and I will say, if I desire this, then it will happen, yes. Even if you don't think of me, then but you just say, I desire this, it will happen. So I know very good, I go and consult with my wife at home. What to do, we can change so many things now about our situation, very good. So I went home and told his wife's story and they were discussing and could make up their minds. Maybe in your house, maybe some richness, whatever. But they were happy now that poverty is over. And while they were discussing, they got very hungry. And the wife said, Oh, it would be nice if I had a sausage now. It would be so nice. And I said, You fool, you know, because there was a sausage line on it. That you wasted one of the three desires. And he became very angry. And then he became so angry, he said, I wish this. Sausage would grow to your nose, you know. So we're stuck in, all of a sudden, floating in up <laughs> to the nose. 
<laughs> Make sausage. The Germans, they eat these things, unfortunately, sometimes. Not always. And then, uh, uh, because he was a good, compassionate husband, he has no other choice than to use the third desire to detach the uh, sausage from his wife's nose. And then all the desires will come. <laughs> so we all have a certain range of desires that can be fulfilled. But we should be very careful to think about it. And the best is if we consult Krishna once this plan and try to tune in with that. With that. So that's, uh, I think, here the uh, verse, and purpose, not very complicated, very clear meaning that the loss of karma is not so easy to understand, even for Yamaraj, what to speak of us. What is right, what is wrong. In Mark Bharata, you see sometimes over several pages they discuss what is right, what is wrong, what is moral, what is not moral. And these discussions are important because we can approach in each situation what will be the right thing to do. Only if we consider from both angles, not just black and white. And we should be very careful when we come to a conclusion. Yeah. Consider in the light of Shastra, Guru Sahib Krishna. So it's not so easy, but if we somehow pray to Krishna, then somehow or other, whatever defects we have that can be made perfect by Krishna's will. So, very simple. Uh, in one sense, simple for the simple, <laughs> complicated for the complicated. But we can understand what a great personality Yamaraj is. And his position is not very easy. And Krishna is protecting him. And he's doing such a great service. So we should have very much appreciation for these Mahajanas and follow their footsteps. Because they are simply taking shelter of Krishna and everything. Mahajana, he and the And we should be very appreciative of the service. Devotees who take responsibility and just have questions and uh, understand they are, they are not in an easy position and uh, appreciate the way they are doing for Krishna. Has there any questions? Yes. Sometimes uh, you come in a situation where there's no spiritual master or senior right. devotee to direct itself what is right and wrong. And you have to sort of, like, how can you, um, can, uh, how can you define what is right and wrong by what means? Yeah, that always depends on the situation, you know. This world is always there for Krishna says, in this world all our endeavors is found with shadow by deep as much as possible, we should try to remember the teachings which we read from Guru and Shastra and never then to apply them in practical situation, but then we have to pray to get a little intelligence and understand. So praying is very helpful. And before we act, we shouldn't just act and think then, but it's good to think before we act a little bit. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, use common sense. If you don't have common sense, ask somebody who has <laughs> reason. <laughs> So that's what attracted me also to the Prabhupada. He, uh, sometimes it was just very much common sense and that brought us down to the earth. Mm -hmm. But to have common sense, we have to pray and not rush too much. It's uh, quite some practice. Your mind has to be free and not prejudiced. And... But there's like a story also, like morality. You know, we learn from Shastra and Guru that to be honest is very important. It's a moral value in this world. But then sometimes it's hard to judge, you know, whether to be honest at all times, truthful, truthfulness, everything rests on truthfulness. It's the last lack of religion, is so important. Be truthful. But then we have to know the truth, truthfulness. And uh, there are big discussions about these values, moral values in Mahabharata. Because it always depends on the situation. Just like there was one Rishi, 
and he was advised that uh, he should take a vow of uh, being truthful as for that. He was truthful as for that. And he wanted to go to heaven. And he was practicing yoga in the forest. And he was always truthful. Whenever somebody asked him, he would tell him the truth. So then there were some villagers coming, running. And they approached the yogi and said, You have seen us now going this direction. And some robbers are following us. They want to plunder us, murder us. So when they ask you where we have gone, please tell them the other direction. They know you are truthful, but in this case. So then uh, he said, no, no, I took this vow, I cannot break it. So the robbers came and asked him where they went, and he told them truthfully where they went. So the robbers caught them and killed them. So then he came after death to the court of Emirates. And he thought he was going to heaven because of his truthfulness, but they told him, you have to go to the hell. And he said, well, how was that? I was truthful my whole life. And then they said, yes, you were truthful, but it was in one step very selfish. And you didn't understand their deeper meanings of moral values. So you didn't study sufficiently. Because in the Shastras it is said, truthfulness is the highest virtue. And uh, when all the other character values were put on one side of the scale, and truthfulness on the other, truthfulness was still heavier. So you are right in that sense. But you didn't learn the other statement, that in order to protect somebody's life, to speak a lie, that is considered uh, morality, the highest morality. So you are just thinking of yourself and your promotion to heavenly your planets. For the sake of protecting somebody else's life, you should have just neglected that. And Yudhishthira Maharaj also said that I never practiced virtue or moral values just for my own sake, just to be elevated to the heavenly planets or something. I didn't expect anything from myself. But the only reason why I practice virtue or moral values was because I just love virtue. I'm just for the sake of being a good person and being a devotee <laughs> and ultimately to please person. Mm -hmm. So these moral values are very, very important. We should not take them lightly, but we have to understand now so they have to have some benefit they should be practiced in a selfish way. Then it's really virtuous, then it's really moral. Mm -hmm. And other medieval for the pleasure of Krishna. But yes, this is not always easy to decide. And for this reason, we should. Uh, before we act, we should think. <laughs> and we should pray. And if we can, we should ask Guru and Sadhu and Shastra. If we cannot, then we have to pray. Thank you a little bit, not uh, act and then think, but think and then act. Does it answer your question? <coughs> no. mm. uh, we talked about um, cultivating the side. Cultivating desire. Desire. Yeah. yeah, like the proper desire. Yeah. So I was just thinking, like, specifically for Sankirtan and for preaching, mm. it often seems that when you are, at least that's my experience, when I'm preaching to someone and the person seems favorable, then mm. I become very, very much attached to, like, doing it in the right way. Mm. Um, and then it almost even backfires because like this person can feel that I get a little tense because I mm. know something is at stake with me. Uh, so I was just wondering what's a, a good desire to cultivate when you preach to people and try to right. uh, help them to push their consciousness. Now that's very nice that you try to do things nicely and you think twice. And by practice you, you become more relaxed. Usually that means it's my opinion. What do you think? I mean, if I had a formula for that problem, <laughs> I would... Uh, uh, as, as you say, um, by 
I practice and right. if you take it on book distribution, if it, right. if it actually goes well mm. and many people they you know mm. buy books, then one becomes also relaxed in every situation. Yeah. If you have a really tough day and nobody takes books, then even you have someone fable mm. or you can become so feverish, oh mm. finally someone mm. say that actually you push him away, he will not because you can yeah. you feel you're very attached. Uh, <clears throat> I guess meditation should be that again we not enjoy us or the results, the results not up to us, but we just have to be present and do our very best at this moment and we have to act for the benefit of the person we're dealing with. It's right. not about us, it's about how can I be an instrument to help that condition so I mean Perfect, but it's a, it's a, yeah. you know, it, it's not, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> For hours, and I know it's not easy. But that's a nice point. Mm -hmm. that we consider actually not about me. I don't have to be empty. Even if I have some insecurity, I have lots of insecurity in my life. Actually, by nature, originally very shy, but never really. <laughs> I'm still working on that, but as time goes by, it gets a little better because you don't consider things so much about. Sometimes you think you perform well, sometimes not so well. It's really up to Krishna. But you pray for that person's benefit. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Somehow then, as time goes by, you get more used to it. Just like when you distribute books, you, after some time you feel more at home on the street. You know? Beginning, you feel like what am I doing here? <laughs> they are all here, and the street belongs to them. They are doing the shopping. What am I doing? And the end, you feel like I'm at home. Here. They come here to visit me or something. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just a matter of time. But that's the most important thing that you get away from this, as Prabhu mentioned, from just thinking so much about yourself. But just enjoying the activity of here as a person, it's so nice to see him. And Krishna, hopefully, from my experience, somehow Krishna will show me a way to his heart. Probably, hopefully. I don't have to do so many things. Sometimes less is more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes so complicated, I have to do this. Sometimes less is more. And that makes it really easy when you depend on Krishna more than on your own life. <laughs> And Krishna will reveal to you. If you feel that compassion, mm -hmm. if you feel, if you think of the person's benefit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you don't think like that, then your heart is still not totally soft and open. Maybe some heart. But when you think of the person's benefit, it becomes soft and the person will somehow feel it. So that's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. You should share this realization. Mm -hmm. And one thing we also should say, actually, we, we, have no, we have nothing to lose. We, are, we already, I mean, yes. we have everything, no, no matter what happens. Right. Thanks to Krishna's mercy, so we're getting Krishna's mercy in every. Yeah. So we don't have to be in anxiety that somehow that we will not, you know, get a fruit or like that. Right. We are we're getting so much fruit. Yeah. Whether, whether it's failure or success, so called, actually, yeah. it's only success when we go out. Yeah, like you read this morning the story of begging from the Brahmins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they might always be successful. There's no loss. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, that's about the attitude which you have. So could you say that attachment to something that doesn't belong to you that is the very cause of anxiety itself. 